Hi everyone, I'm Dumi. And I'm Ru. And this is another episode to our rebranded podcast called Love in Progress. Mm-hmm. Um, which you can check out on all the streaming podcast apps. Streaming platforms. Streaming platforms. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, today we're going to be talking about a very special topic that comes about in a lot of relationships, which is cheating so fun fact <laughs> i don't know if it's fun it's funny now it wasn't funny <laughs> then but i didn't believe i was cheating until i got caught mm. which sounds terrible but let me explain let me explain myself right before i met the love of my life this one right i was tired of being in the streets i in my opinion i had been in the streets for way too long and i wanted to settle down so i had approached someone's daughter and i had said yo i'm tired of being in the streets i really want to build something with someone and i want that someone to be you you know and they were like okay i hear you out let's see let's let's plan this out and see what the plan is so we were in the process of planning things you know with video call and constantly be communicating to see like what's what's going on what's the plan you know and then i i met her she moved in to my house really in a week (laughs) but i didn't i didn't let either of them know of their existence yeah so before you guys call me a home wrecker that's not what i am yeah i didn't know there was a home to be wrecking yeah Um, i just came in and you know just moved in and things started that way it did it was so yeah. natural like we didn't mm. even have a plan we just started doing things yeah <laughs> which is not always the best you know but it got us somewhere and mm. um i'm honestly grateful that you came into my life Aww. you know however i should have treated you better because it took six months yeah to actually find out that this was happening like not that i didn't know of this person's existence yeah like i i knew because you know we're very open people with like yeah. in terms of like our tech and stuff so i'd be like oh who's this who's texting me like oh this is my friend mm. um and i'd be like oh cool you know we'd have a conversation you tell me and you're like oh well, this person and I, did you tell me that you guys were like planning things before i think no. you did you did did Mm-mm. you not no i think you did you did tell me because i would read the text so no, you didn't? <gasps> Girl. You didn't you knew nothing. Oh my god. This is worse than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> you knew that you're in the dark, which again is very weird because like you said, we have a very open policy relationship. Mm. You know, and I think the one time I really dropped the ball was when I was going through something. I don't even remember what it was. That, I think it had, it had to do with, like, parentals or something like that. Usually. Like some, deep, some deep stuff. Usually. Yeah. You know, and I felt like I needed to remove myself from our relationship and go and talk to this other person. Mm-hmm. I remember because, um, you know, we, we used to talk about a lot of stuff, like, everything. Like, yeah. a lot of things. Like, if, if, if it was an issue, we would just talk about it. And for whatever reason, this one time, you really just didn't want to talk like it took a while for you to start talking to me in general about you know <laughs> important things yeah um, and sometimes you would just make it a little too difficult which is fine you know we're learning um but this time you really were like okay i'm gonna take a walk yeah and my anxious attachment style was like panicking but she was like you know what just give her a space to breathe mm. and so you went on a walk did yeah. i follow you no no, no 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 I was just on the phone. Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't remember what how did I find out? I told you. You did? Mm. What did you say? I feel like I feel like I'm hearing the story all over again, guys. <laughs> because I'm confused because I thought maybe I went through your phone. I mean, I probably. I think mm. that's more that's more accurate. Because I don't think you were planning on telling me. No. Yeah. So I think I, I think what happened was that oh, you came back and I was just like on your phone as I usually am mm. and I saw like a call. And I asked you, like, what, oh, you and your friend were talking. Mm. And you were like, yeah. And I was like, oh, you, you called them whilst you were out? I thought you needed time alone. Time. Mm. Mm. But, yeah, I mean, it, now, now that we're talking about it, you know, it had a lot to do with um, my mindset mm. at the time, which wasn't ready for something so real in a sense like yeah i had said like yeah i want to build i'm tired of being in the streets whatever but i still had street mentality (laughs) guys you know you can take 
you know, the boy out of the hood, but you can't take the hood out of the boy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right? And basically, there's this belief. I don't know how many people can relate, but there's this belief that you must have, like, a backup. You know, mm. like, you can't put everything on one person, you mm. know? And I already had these insecurities about being a burden and being too much, yeah. you know? So I felt like constantly coming to you about my troubles and opening up, I was becoming a burden. I was going to push you away. Mm. Ironically enough, moving away from you <laughs> was what was actually pushing you away so i was using this other person as a backup if this didn't work out if you decide that you're gonna leave me like i don't think you're gonna leave me for someone else you know i think you love yourself enough that you're gonna probably leave me for you <laughs> and money <laughs> that's it <laughs> but <laughs> but the main issue here is my mindset also when it came to people like people are not props in your life mm. you know and it took a long time for me to realize that yeah. that i can't just be like oh i'm gonna put this person on reserve just in case you know that's an entire human being with a life and stuff and i didn't respect that person enough to tell them that okay listen i really am doing something with this person and i wish you well and i wish we can still be friends mm. you know instead i just kind of ignored it and was just kind of keeping that door kind of open just in case you you know ran mm. off with all our mm. money and that really hurt me like i can hurt, imagine it, it hurt me a lot because i guess for me um it wasn't so much that you were talking to this person i mean it did hurt that you were more comfortable talking to them at in this difficult time um that i didn't really understand because i was you know i had like put a lot into this relationship at the mm. time i had just poured so much of my emotions and i put everything on the line and it just felt like you were still just second guessing and you weren't really like you you just you just didn't choose to trust me with your emotions and i i also believe that she was your friend at the time because you're like oh we're just friends and i was like mm. eh, okay cool mm. um and i had no issue with you know you um being able to talk to your friends about things that are difficult for you like that's absolutely okay it's just that it felt like you were just trying to hide this from me and i was and it just felt like you just were trying to avoid it and there mm. was something i really wasn't getting mm. um and when you told me it just really hurt because i thought you had just trusted me a bit more than this right and also i felt really bad for her um and also bad for you because that relationship also was just a little bit toxic on its own. But it that's, was. that's an issue for another day. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, she was still under the impression that, you know, we were trying to you were build trying something. to build something. You guys mm. had like plans and now she, you know, was out of the loop. You weren't talking to her as much as before, no more video calls, and now she's just out of the picture and you, mm. you didn't really give her an explanation as to what was happening. No. Nah. Um, no, definitely, yeah. I agree. I, I was an ass. I was scared, fam. Like, <laughs> I never knew, like, this was possible, you know? Like, people... I don't, I don't know what type of relationships you were having before you got into this one, but there was always this thing of just you have to always look out for yourself, you know? Like, we're taught to have emergency funds, to be ready to just, you know, leave and whatever. And my emergency fund, I guess, was just my emotions because I'd never been so emotionally open with anyone like mm. this before. Mm. So I just wanted to keep some for myself and I that's guess. okay that's, that's definitely okay i guess it just felt like there was no transparency yeah you know um i don't think you have to give your all mm. um but at least you know let that the person know that this is kind of how i'm feeling and this is the what i would like to keep to myself i least. agree yeah definitely so I understand that this might not seem like a big deal to a lot of people because when people think cheating, you know, it's, it can be very dramatic. Mm -hmm. It can be very real, you know, very traumatic. Yeah. But this this was very real and very traumatic to us and it gives you an idea of what cheating can look like to different people. You know, like micro-cheating is a real thing and it can have real consequences and real relationships, you know, because I think a few months later, mm. after we had this whole breakdown, you know, now I'm completely vulnerable. You started getting texts from your ex-ish. Yeah. He just doesn't deserve the title of a full ex. I get because, that. Yeah. I get that. So, <laughs> you started getting texts from your ex-ish and you'd get really, really excited. Yeah. You know. I guess um, at the time, it was, we were having a really difficult time just mm. emotionally. 
connecting because I felt like I was betrayed emotionally. Definitely. So it felt like, you know, I couldn't really trust you with my feelings. Mm. Um, and it made me very hesitant to just relax yeah. and just be in the moment. Yeah. Um, so when this person popped up, it it wasn't necessarily because I was trying to hurt you or anything. Mm. Um we were friends at the time, you know, strange friends, but friends. Um, and when this person came into my life, it felt like I could get, like, it's something familiar. Mm. Because at the time, I really was just emotionally just lost. And this person was an emotional beacon for me at some point in my life. And it just felt so familiar that I could just relax again. Yeah. Um, this was not healthy in any sense because yeah. that relationship had its own issues that i'm still to this day going through and learning um about um it wasn't healthy in any sense but i guess it just felt very comfortable because i just didn't know what i could do in that situation i get that i get that i guess for me it wasn't a matter of like like i don't mind you (laughs) getting excited talking to other people or anything it's just it was just so out of character like your behavior was completely out of character you were so it didn't matter who was on the other end honestly it really was just it was such a drastic change Mm. and i felt kind of betrayed because i wasn't understanding what was going on and you weren't being open about what was going on because you just be like oh but it's just just my friend like we're just friends and it's true you're just friends right but there's something deeper Mm -hmm. and already the history you guys had you know so now i start projecting that history into your behavior Mm. i guess it was also like a trained response Mm. Um, like, because I guess, like, your trauma, uh, but because, um, I guess I only realized this a few days ago when I was just going through some emotional stuff and just kind of going through, like, of a lot of my relationships and trying to figure out why they all looked so similar. Um, and I realized that they all felt familiar and why I would go for the same type of people because it felt familiar and because it reminded me so much of how love looked in my childhood Mm. it was very absent and emotionally unavailable yeah so every time i was in a relationship most of my relationships um with people that i considered serious were very were with people who were emotionally unavailable or too within themselves to really care about me and this was one of those relationships and i never really um healed at that point i wasn't really even aware of what was happening and it was just a trained response that i have when you you know when i get this um stimulus like oh they're giving me attention because back then i just i would fight for that attention because they're so unavailable when i get attention i just hold on to it and i try uh, my best to feel like i work for it Mm. to feel like i'm worthy of that attention Mm. so it was just something that i had been doing a lot and it was something i had to unlearn um and i'm still unlearning to this day and that's what made our relationship so difficult and so different because i didn't really have to earn anything here i was just loved and it was given freely and openly and when i had and when it felt like i had lost that Mm. you know this new emotion where i didn't really have to struggle um, it felt like the only way I could be loved was if I struggled struggled for it. So, yeah. yeah. Damn. Damn. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what, what I liked about these conversations when we talk about uh, how we're feeling is that we focused on what was happening internally, yeah. like both in the individual and in our immediate relationship you know because i think when you watch a lot of things like cheaters or a lot of movies or stuff it's always like oh you have to fight the other person or oh it's about the other you start looking outside like oh what does that person have what is that person giving you that i'm not giving you instead of asking your partner what is it that you need Mm, like what how can i be there for you how can i support you how can i help you you know Mm. so i think that's what really helped us kind of work through this is that we were focused on internally what is going on with you and not why her why are you cheating on me with her or him mm. just i forget that you're <laughs> bisexual <laughs> me too sometimes i forget men exist sometimes because my too. whole feed is just women i mean even even though we were both hurt we didn't really register it mm. as cheating which was something that was very important in our healing process because at that point we had to figure out like what 
cheating meant to both of us yeah that was the next conversation because we really were tired of hurting each other <laughs> and feeling like we did nothing wrong yeah because it was so weird because you were like ah oh, but i didn't do i don't think i'm doing anything wrong but you're hurt and we kind of you know we're like okay but like what do you consider cheating, and cheating? why is mm. this hurting you yeah why why are you feeling this way and mm. we had to now start dealing with our emotions of betrayal you know yeah, mm. definitely definitely because there isn't a standard there isn't a default this is what cheating is you should only be hurt here because you know the heart is a funny thing it gets mm. really hurt at really specific things sometimes and it's a you thing and i think it's only right that you let your partner be aware of that mm. and sometimes you'll only learn things in a specific relationship mm. and they still need to be addressed mm. so yeah i guess it was really nice that we had we took some time to just sit down and like kind of list the things we considered um as betrayal Mm. and we you know like in our relationship we have to argue about it and kind of figure out why these things make us feel so because sometimes these things were just insecurities manifesting yeah you know and we also had to learn how to deal with that as well um because it was we were not trying to like keep each other caged yeah as well or just control each other because i don't think that it's really possible to or right to um have say over your partner's like emotions and their thoughts and try to have control over them like i i I have my dumb tendencies but i feel like you can't really um punish your partner for having thoughts and feelings that are separate and that are separate from you in the relationship like it happens they're, they're human, human <laughs> right so it's it's weird like it, it may hurt you and we can talk about that and we can get mm. through it mm. um but to be like you know you should stop thinking about this person mm. you know you should um start feeling this way you should do this and that it doesn't really work and it's harmful yeah yeah you could just end up hurting your partner even more and yourself and yourself yeah yeah, yeah. so that that was fun yeah <laughs> <laughs> a bit on the heavy side but you know um we're, we're okay right yeah, okay. yeah we're good you're good. constantly working on it always 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 um just going over our contracts yeah constantly. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for having this conversation with me it was very it was nice to have it again yeah. it's been a while yeah, it's been a while yeah. thank you for opening up i appreciate it so don't forget to have these conversations with your partner so that you guys aren't blindsided on, you know, when you hurt them. Yeah. Cool. Because infidelity looks different for every single person. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So this has been the first episode of our podcast, Love in Progress. Mm-hmm. If you want to watch the video, you can watch it on YouTube. Please subscribe. And if you just want to listen to us instead, you can um, find our podcast on any podcasting platform that you prefer. Yeah, and if you want to submit anything anonymously, you can use our Ask Romy platform, which you can find in the link of the descriptions of any of our videos on YouTube. And our YouTube channel is by Rumi, and I'm Ru. And I'm Dumi. Thank you for listening. Bye.